Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, this is my son Ben, and today we have a Dalmor Portwood Reserve bottle here in our cask. I think we already had 12 of you all together, right? Yes, we yeah. had a lot of Dalmor. Uh, I had a lot of Dalmor. You had a lot of Dalmor. <laughs> I think I only had the 12 years yet, mm -hmm. and I've never been to Dalmor. <laughs> and Dalmor is one of my really, really favorite. And uh, it's in the Northern Highlands. And uh, well, they are very uh, special about their whiskies. And uh, well, they uh, were able to increase quality over the last two, three decades a lot. In the beginning, they just had only a, um, one bottle with 12 years old. Uh, <clears throat> and now they have a lot of different Dalmor. And typically, Dalmor has a lot of sherry cask maturations and others. Mm -hmm. And this is a portwood reserve, and the portwood is a <laughs> is a uh, tawny port, which is one of my favorite uh, maturation methods. Mm -hmm. So Dalmore together with the port, tawny port, this is what I like. So I, I expect the best of that. Yeah, I, I think I've seen a lot of Dalmore portwood finishes and Dalmore portwood something there are a lot of them on the market mm -hmm. what i really like is i think I've, I've corrected or done something to the text of dalmore the distillery text on whiskey.com and the story is really nice about the mm -hmm. the stack because it's uh it's a royal stack and there was a, a king and he got attacked by the stack. King Alexander. King Alexander. Oh, yeah. The third. Sure. The third. Yeah. King so Alexander. What, there's the third. a bottle called there's King Alexander. There's a bottle. Alexander yeah. The third. And he got attacked by that stack. In 1263. 1263. Yeah. You even know that. No, that no. It's standing here. Standing <laughs> yeah, right here. And I think the chief of the clan that uh, owned Dalmore um, saved the, the, the king. king. Mm -hmm. So he was allowed to have the royal stag as his uh, in his coat of arms in his coat of arms so that's yeah. what you call it uh, yeah. in his emblem yeah. for his clan so mm, yeah so and uh, you, you know when when a stag is allowed to be called a 12 and stag well it has the stag, 12 ends uh, yeah but <laughs> when when is an end and end there's sometimes there are very small ends and they, this is one <laughs> 13 14 so if you uh, prepare and, and conserve the stack the head of the stack and and put it at the wall and then you have your your keys with a ring in it and if the ring with the keys fixes to the end <laughs> then it's countable <laughs> and therefore, all all the stags look a bit little up. <laughs> Put it more back. <laughs> so a hunter in New Zealand once told that story to me. Is that the official way or the I New Zealand know. way? <laughs> I think the, the New Zealand way. Well, it's a it's a, it's a cool definition. How else would you define it? <laughs> and there they are hunting deers. Uh, because they have a lot of them, they are imported, they know endemic species. And uh, <clears throat> there's always at Easter, there's a hunt, a big hunt. And they're hunting and, and killing deers all over the place. And not the one with the biggest uh, enters uh, 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 wins, but the one who enters the stack which is closest to the average in the county. <laughs> This is the man who wins. <laughs> so that you not always hunt for the biggest, but as well for the smallest as well. You hunt for the, the most average. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the one he killed was, was really average. <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful, impressive, full note. It's fruity. And then there is the 46.5 ABV. It's quite a lot and strong on the nose and uh, yeah red berries oranges plums and a a toffee note in it so it's full intense and well it covers all your nose mm -hmm. yeah it's i find it really nice and fruity but fruity as in a deep fruit berry so it's it's almost Berries combined with a bit of grapes, with a bit of plums. The grapes, yes. Yeah, definitely the grapes. grapes. And it's a bit, a little bit sour as well. So a bit reminds of a, a wine, a normal wine. Yeah, probably the grapes from the tawny pot. 
probably could be. I find those oranges or citrus notes, which is very popular or very known for the whiskies from the Northern Highlands, which is north of uh, Inverness, mm. Benevis, <clears throat> the Loch Ness Fault. The north of that is the Northern Highlands. There are very few distilleries up there. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Mm. It really attacks your mouth. It's full and shows the, well, at first a, a lightly sweet tangerine note from those oranges developing into those. And then there's creamy caramel. And after that, it turns completely to a more yeah, oaky aftertaste. There are some lightly bitter coffee notes in it. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's more it's more those blood oranges. Mm. That are slightly bitter. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> it's get a bit more, as you said, juicier, a bit more blood oranges or juice oranges. Um, also you feel more of the oak. Um bit bit of bitter sweetness coming as well. It's getting deeper, darker, more of the heavy tones. Um, you said that there is uh, just half of the whiskey is matured in ex-bourbon casks, mm -hmm. ex-American oak casks, and after the, that only half of it is mm -hmm. uh, finished in a second cask, and it would say, well, well done, mm -hmm. uh, more of that in this whiskey would have been well overwhelming and more mm -hmm. attacking in your mouth. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. uh, not showing an age statement, I would say it has quite an age. What I find really interesting is when you have it in your mouth, it's it's really soft and oily, creamy, and it just wanders around in your mouth really, really soft and easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's from the intensity. I think Richard Patterson just hit the spot. It's it's really intense, definitely, but it's not over intense, and you don't mm -hmm. get that that fluffy mouth feeling that you get from some of the port and sherry sherry casks so i really like the he will he i would say he he touched the edge of the intensity yeah there is a this is tawny port one of my favorite mm -hmm. um there are other portwood finishes at the dalmar range and somewhere i re read that this is from a portwood series <clears throat> I haven't found it again. So I think we can expect more of these. And uh, yeah, I like it very much. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, how a potwood finish should be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. <clears throat> uh, nice. Price is not that low. It's mm -hmm. yeah. in the higher 60s to 70s, probably in some countries in the 80s. Yeah, definitely. So, so mm -hmm. Dalmore develops into a, well, a high price or medium to high price have uh, they ever whiskey? been have they ever been cheap i think yeah. they've always been no in the in the beginning in the beginning they were quite okay. unknown uh, very unknown distillery when we started into business 25 years ago and then they increased prices and they did a lot for increasing quality and mm -hmm. selecting better casks and so on and now they have a wonderful range of aged uh, with an age statement on it and they are well quite affordable. affordable. Really, really good distillery. <coughs> yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share this video with your friends and see you next time.